lines are blurring Something more than what you thought Something that you think it's not Some things never change A feeling's hanging A feeling that you can't escape No matter how much you take It never goes away Thinking of leaving Every day throws up a sign Feels like you wasted too much time Waiting on yourself We're running, run, run, run the houses Run, run, run inside your head you Run, 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 run the houses Run, run, run and Wheels are spinning, even though the car is stalled. Choking, smoking, gulps us all, waiting for the fall. Head like a traffic jam with secrets I can never keep. Concrete blocks around my feet, afraid to take the lead. Run. Run, run the houses Run, run, run inside your head you. Run, 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 run the houses Run, run, run back Run, 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 run the houses Run, run, run inside your head you. Run, run, run Run the houses, run to run down. So, Round the Houses uh, was the third single uh, from the Romance and Melodrama album, and it's it's my favourite uh, of the of the songs on the album. Uh, sorry, it's the the camera's here and the screen's there, so I, I keep looking away. Sorry if that's uh, disconcerting anybody. 
But yeah, uh, Round the Houses was the third single from the Romance and Melodrama album. I wrote it uh, around about four years ago. I The initial idea, I wanted... I kind of I wanted to have something that had a kind of cycle and rough, a kind of cyclical uh, rough, uh, and and the way that um, the Pixies used to do, you know, stuff like uh, Vamos and a lot of their earlier stuff had has this sort of cyclical feeling where it's not quite it's not quite standard four four rhythm. It sort of goes in circles. Or uh, some, th- something against you is another great uh, example, but um, and I kind of wanted to try and see if I could do that, um, something in that vein, but in my own way. Um, and I had this tune, this uh, E minor G B seven uh, chord sequence, which was sounding pretty good, um, feeling pretty good, and but I couldn't come up with lyrics, and then one day. I was on a bus uh, from Belfast to Derry. And whatever was going on in my head, uh, I think a lot of things uh, were going on in my head, actually. Um, It all just fell out of me. It all just came out um, sort of all in one go, really. And uh, I didn't have to do... A massive amount of editing. I don't have to do a massive amount of going over things and over things. Um, I might have had a wee bit of the lyrics before it, but I just remember coming out, everything just coming out, just pouring out. And um, when you have a when you have that happen, a lot of what you do uh, in terms of writing, a lot of what you do is just editing because it just comes out of you. It's like pure inspiration. And it just comes pouring out, and then the the big job is uh, just editing it down uh, and and turning it into something that makes sense. And uh, and that's what I that's what I tried to do. I I, um, I later realized that the the basic idea of the song. Is about the feeling, the feeling of anxiety. What anxiety feels like, or at least uh, what it feels like for me. In my case, uh, I don't know how how it feels for other people or how it works for other people, but I know sort of how it feels for me uh, and what it does to me. Uh, and that's I realized that's basically that's the general idea of the song. Is is it's like an anxiety thing. It's um, the the feeling that I was trying to articulate that I'd been having for as long as I could remember, um, and it's in the song. It's that feeling of um, it's like a car that's up on up on um, up on bricks or something, but and the and the wheels are spinning, uh, but it's not going anywhere, and it's generating a lot of energy but it's not being used for anything um it's not going anywhere there's no forward momentum it's just sort of spinning its wheels and that was a way that i'd been feeling for a long time and that's why it's on the songs that's how i felt um just in general really and uh and so again it was it was my girlfriend explaining to me what anxiety was you know it was like because I was trying to explain to her how I was feeling and, and she was like no that's anxiety that's what that is that's how anxiety feels for a lot of people that's what that is and I was like okay you know this uh, this way that I'd been feeling for my entire life but like every day for my whole life or for as long as I could remember um, somebody finally gave it a name you know and I'm not uh, a massive fan of 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 this idea that everything has to be labeled, but it it can be handy sometimes when you're, um, when you when you feel like um, you're the only person in the world that could possibly feel this way, 
And I think it, it, that happens with um, conditions like depression and anxiety. I'm not sure about other mental health conditions because I don't suffer from them, so I wouldn't be able to speak on it. But my experience of de uh, depression and anxiety is that it, it isolates you. It makes you feel like you're the only person in the world that could possibly feel this way. Um, could possibly be going through this thing. And um, fortunately, if you're in a fortunate position to find, to meet someone who actually says, no, that's, <laughs> that's this, that's what that feels like. I was like, okay, right, nice one. Um, so, I, I, yeah, it's, um, as I've said elsewhere, it's a, it's a, it's a dark oil song. Um, but hopefully, you know, people seem to like it, and I like it personally. It's like, as I say, it's my favorite on the album. Um, but people seem to like it. People seem to be into it. Um, uh, as I say, it's a dark old song, but hopefully, if you can get something from it, that'll you know, that's job done as far as I'm concerned. Uh, in terms of the recording and the production of it. Um, I had a fairly clear idea of what I wanted to do. Um, I knew I wanted this sort of off kilter rhythm, this sort of again this Pixies thing of of it's if it's not a, like a a standard four four. It's a it's it's a kind it's like half measures and and it's this this thing that goes in cycles and doesn't quite resolve itself in the standard rock and roll or pop music way. And uh, it can be difficult to try and communicate that to somebody, um, and especially since I'm not a I'm not an amazing guitar player, so it's it's difficult for me to play it exactly spot on every single time to be able to uh, communicate it to an, a producer to be able to say this is exactly what I want, and um, and es and especially since I couldn't get a metronome that was that could do what I needed it to do in terms of the time signature, in terms of the number of measures. I couldn't program a, a metronome to do that thing. Um, again, having rather limited experience of working with metronomes and things, I couldn't, you know. It's a, it's a different thing if it's a, like a standard number of beats to the bar. Each, so each th measure is this number of beats, you know. That's e it's... It can be tricky to play to a metronome, and I, I certainly have trouble playing to a metronome a lot of times, but it's easier to do that uh, when you've got a kind of stand, more standard uh, time signature, whereas this is slightly slightly unorthodox. So it was really tricky <laughs> trying to actually get a serviceable take that I could, um, that we could sort of build on, you know, a serviceable take of guitar acoustic guitar I think we doubled up the acoustic guitars I think that's pretty much the uh, I think that was the, the pretty much the whole of the romance melodrama album we you know we would uh, double up the acoustic guitars and pan them left and right and that was that's why it sounds the way it does um, and again I had a fairly I, I wanted it to be fairly straight in the verses um Almost a kind of rockabilly kind of feel, you know, fairly straightforward. Just keep stay out of the way of the words, you know, which I think is a pretty a pretty good practice when you're working with a singer songwriter. Just stay out of the way of the words, you'll be all right, you know. Let the and then fill up the spaces if you want, um, and. Um, the choruses, again, because we knew we had a good chorus to work with. Uh, Shane added a lot of keyboard and he added a, like a brass sound, uh, like a horn part, which I wasn't, you know, he, he, he said, I might put a bit of brass on this or like a keyboard, really. You know, a wee look behind the curtain for you. It's not actually brass. Um, but um, I remember Shane suggesting that, and I was like, I'm not sure. And then he, 
he said, sure, I'll try it. And if you don't like it, we'll take it off kind of thing. And he he showed me a wee clip of it. And it just added something. It just, it, it you know, I, I knew what he meant. You know, it, could, it just had a, it gave it a, diff, a slightly different feel, you know. It had a, a certain something that it wouldn't have had otherwise. And um, <clears throat> and then we, you know, we had that and then the end and the, I suppose you would call it a post-chorus or an outro section. Um, that, but, uh, the back again, but, uh, for those of you not au fait with uh, musical terminology, um, that I wanted the these sort of lines of guitar and keyboards and and sort of vocals, sort of intersect and swooping and and an out and you know intersecting with each other and I wanted it to be these sort of lines crisscrossing each other. And again, I had a I had a fair idea what I wanted to do, and. Um, and I think we got there. I think it's. I think the recording uh, really works. I think I'm. I'm really, really chuffed with it. It's. It's one of the ones on the album that I can actually listen to. I, that I, you know, I would have a difficult time. I think you would have to strap me into the chair to make me listen to the rest of the album. I don't think I would be able to sit through it. But I've heard around the houses a few times now, and I don't. I've, I'm still not. Uh, still not sick of it. Perhaps that's why it's my favorite on the album. I don't know, but as I, I mean, and in terms of uh, you know the fact that it's what three and a half minutes long, it's it's the one that naturally made sense to me as a single. Uh, I wanted "You'll Never Change" out as a single, um, just for myself. Uh, I I knew that in terms of length and in terms of the feel of the thing I knew that it wasn't going to be a, a natural fit for a pop song or a natural fit for a traditional single but I knew that I wanted it uh, to be the first single just you know because when I wrote it at 22 I knew that I wanted it to be this, the first single the first thing I was going to put out was going to be You'll Never Change and I knew that and I carried that with me uh, but I knew also that if there was going to be a song that I was going to say, yeah, that's the one to send to people. That's the one to try and sell the album. Uh, it was going to be around the houses. Do you know what I mean? Because Lost a Friend, I like. And I think we did a good job. But again, it's too long for a traditional single. If, if, you're, if you're going by the traditional thing of it has to be three, you know, it has to be under four minutes to be a single. You know, if you're going by the traditional I, I should have a drinking game every time I say the word traditional in a sort of rather sardonic fashion um, but yeah if you're going by that sort of traditional set of rules of, of it has to be under four minutes or it has to be it has to be three minutes to be a single because that was that's how we're programmed to think um, even though I, I think we're we've come into a or we're coming on the point where I, I don't think it really matters anymore because of just people consume music in different ways. I don't think really people really care how long it is, just so long as they like it, you know. I mean, if, we, if we're going by, um, what do you call it, if we're going by TikTok to, to sell music, you know, any more than 15 seconds, then you're, you're finished, you know what I mean? But... Um, that's been the one. Round the Houses has been the one. I'm off topic. But Round the Houses uh, has been the song that I've sent around. Uh, it's been played on a few radio shows now. And, and uh, it's been, I think, playlisted uh, once or twice, you know. Which, is a, it's about as good as I can do because I've, I'm have i useless at marketing. And I, I'm j I just, you know, I'm just not a marketing whiz. Um, and I have a, a bit of a mental block when it comes to marketing and PR. I'm just, I'm, I have this thing, I'm not good at it and I don't, and for some reason I don't feel like I want to be good at it. Um, but 
it's done all right, you know, and it, and it's and it's one that I would still, you know, I'd still throw it out there to be like uh, representative of me and what I do, even though it sounds, you know, my uh, the songs on the album sort of do sound different from one another, which is what I wanted. I didn't want it all to sound the same. Um, and in a strange way, and I've thought about this. In a strange way, it uh, sort of signposts the way that I wanted the second album to go. I mean, uh, just these big, dark electric guitars um, and this sort of dark song. That's what I wanted the, the sorry. That's what I wanted the second album to sound like, roughly. Um, and that's the sort of that was in my head. That was the signpost for, or that was me um, sort of unconsciously leaving breadcrumbs to sort of say this is going to be the the sort of thing that I want to do for the next album. But uh, and it, uh, as I say, I'm 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 really proud of it. I'm really chuffed uh, with what myself and Shane were able to do, and and I'm really glad that people seem to really like it. Um, which again, if if you know if you write something that comes from a dark place about some real shit that you're going through uh, and it manages to connect with people uh, then that's the job done as far as I'm concerned 